is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute spiral with a pendant and a pair of earrings. And it turns out really cute. It's pretty easy to do. It, just, it takes a little bit of time to make your spiral, of course. When you're using 11 O seed beads, it, it seems to move kind of slow. But it's really not bad. I made mine in a couple of hours and um, it turned out really nice. I've made a couple little pairs of earrings with the spiral again. And it's really pretty. So this is with <clears throat> the crystals and the pendant found in the treasure bag. However, you can use any pendant you want. You can use any seed beads you want. You could use anything across the middle for a pendant. You could use a bicone, whatever. So this is what we're going to make today. I do have some of these bicones if you want a variety pack of those. And um, I'll post the link in the description box beneath the video player. But this just really turns out cute. And I think you're really going to enjoy it. So this is what it looks like. And let's go ahead and look and see what it takes to make this set. Okay, for this tutorial today, we will be using 11 O seed beads in two colors. These are both Toho, and I am using a translucent cobalt blue and a permanent finish, galvanized permanent finish starlight. I am also using galvanized permanent finish starlight in 8 O, and you'll need a few 8 O's. Then we will be using from the treasure bag, the Winter Wonders treasure bag, we'll be using this blue pendant and one of the blue big bicone crystals and then two of the six millimeter round blue pearls and a toggle clasp. Now this is about 12 by 8 or 12 by 9 millimeter crystal. You can go ahead and um, replace this with like a eight millimeter long cuboid. Um, you can use any large crystal that will cover the space over the top of your pendant um, nicely like this. So whatever pendant you choose, if you're not using the bag, just choose something that will kind of cover the space. And you'll see as I put this together, you could also use two um, Let's say you use two six millimeter or two four millimeter bicones, something like that, over the top too. So instead of just sliding through this one crystal, you can slide through two. So you can modify this to work with anything you have. I also have some of these crystals in variety packs in my website website store. So if you really want some of these large bicones, you can get some. And then we will be using two needles. I'm using size 12, size 10 will work just fine for this too. And then we'll be using some six pound fire line in the smoke color, just so that you don't see the thread so much because this can be kind of a thready stitch. And the smoke color fire line will blend in better. So what we're going to do to start is put about five feet of thread onto our needle. We will need to extend our fire line during this process. So I will put a link to a video that will show you how to do that in the description box beneath the video player. So go ahead and put about five feet onto your needle and, or actually, we're going to thread two needles. So just have five feet ready and in the next segment we'll discuss that. Okay, so though it's difficult to see, I'll pick it up and put it in my hand. I have folded my five feet of thread in half and put a needle on either side. So on both sides of your thread, you're going to put a needle on and then just lay your needles next to each other and make sure that the amount of thread that you pulled through the needle is the same length basically on both sides. That way when we center our pendant, it will be centered on our thread and we will have the same amount of thread on either side to work our necklace with. So go ahead and put a needle on both sides of your thread and then I'm just going to fold it over like this so that I can work with it. And then I'm going to straighten out my thread and now I have my two needles just like this. So <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is, let's back off just a little, I'm going to pick up my pendant and I'm just going to go through it with my needle. 
and then I'm going to pick up both of my needles and I'm going to draw this down to the center of the thread just like this so now I have the same amount of thread on either side going through my needles uncross your needles because they're going to get all messed up and just make sure that you have your thread nice and neat on either side and my needles are still crossed so let me uncross them and just arrange yourself so coming through your pendant you have your thread pretty straight and I'm going to recenter by putting my needles back together just like that okay so now I have a piece of thread coming out on either side and my pendant is pretty much centered the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my needles back together once you have them apart like this you have your thread all arranged you shouldn't have too much tangling issue. Now you're going to take one 8 seed bead and you're going to put it over both of those needles. Come here you. So I've just dropped it down both needles and then I'm just going to pull my needles straight out and bring this down to my pendant. And then again I'm going to separate my needles. and straighten everything out just like that. Now again I have my needles available on either side of the pendant and we are going to pick up an 11-0 on both needles. Whoops, let me get some down here so you can see what I'm doing. My left hand doesn't really like to pick up beads. So I've got 11-0 on both needles and then I'm going to pick up a pearl and then I'm going to pick up an 11-0 and I'm going to do that on the other needle also. Pick up a pearl and pick up an 11-0. And I'm just going to put my needles together and draw these down. So I keep everything nice and centered. And then I have to separate my threads again <clears throat> and straighten everything out. Now you're going to pick up an 8 on both needles and then an 11 on both needles. Just drop them down to the thread and then you're going to pick up your big crystal and you're going to go through it with one needle straight through it and then go through it with the other needle. like this. Now I'm going to take my two needles and I'm going to pull them until I can draw this down to my piece just like this. Now I'm going to get you in a little bit closer. We're going to secure this a couple of times and then add some beads so that we can build the sides up to do our um, spiral. So what you have to do is just set one needle completely aside. So I'm going to set my left one aside. I'm going to park it over here, keep my thread over to that side so that I don't tangle in it, and I'm going to pick up my right needle. And I am going to come from the crystal straight down into all the beads on this side, so on the right side. So I'm going through the 11 out, the 8 out, the 11 out, the pearl, the 11 0 on the other side of the pearl and then down into the 8 0 and then up through the pendant just like this and I'm going to pull this down and straighten it back out and then <clears throat> I'm going to go straight back up that side so we don't want to cross over, go to the other side. We just want to go straight up the 8 0 we're through the pendant, go up the 8 0 the 11 0 the pearl, and all three of the seed beads above the pearl here, and pull everything back into place because it's going to get all whacked out there. 
then just park that needle. Pick up your other needle, your left needle, and do the same thing on the left side. So I'm going to go down and move my thread over here out of the way and tighten everything up. And I am going to sew down all three of the seed beads on this side and the pearl and the 11 0 and then down into the 8 0 and see if I can come up through that pendant just like that. Hold on to it and pull your thread through. Now we're coming through the pendant. We're going to go straight back up through the 8 0 and all the beads on the left side again. So through the 11 0, the pearl, and the 11 0 behind it. I'm going to do this in two movements because it's positioned strangely. And now I can go, since I'm coming out of this 11 0, I can go down into the 8 0 and the 11 0 behind that 8 0 and pull my thread through. Now I'm going to take my right thread and I'm going to go through the crystal. And park that needle aside, pick up your left needle and go through the crystal. Just keep your threads separate so you don't tangle them and go straight through that crystal. And now you should have your needles on either side again and this is what you should have. Now we are going to add a little bead here and then we'll secure the pendant one more time and by the time we've situated this entire thing to get ready for our spiral it'll be very secure and you don't have to worry about it breaking or anything else. It'll have enough thread through it and then we can just work up the sides of the necklace. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down. I'm taking my right thread. I'm going to pick up my piece and I'm going to go down into this just the first 11 0 next to the crystal here and pull my thread through just like that. Then I'm going to pick up an 11 0 seed bead and I'm going to go back down into from the top. So from this is the top here. We're going to go down from the top into that 11 0 seed bead. Make sure things do not get loose. Tighten it up by pulling on your threads. And this little 11 0 should just lay right next to the 11 0 that you just passed through. Now we have to go down into the 8 0, the 11 0 beneath it, and we are going to again sew through all the beads on the right side of the pendant here. So I'm going down through the 11 0 and the pearl and I'm just going to go ahead and just exit right out that 8 0 and then I can go through my pendant again. <clears throat> now I can go through my pendant and I'm going to travel back up these beads just on the right side here. And I'm going to come through all of them and then when I get up to the 11 O's, I'm going to go through the 11 O's sticking out, the one that we just put on, I'm going to go through that one. So first I'm just going to pull through, I'm coming out of the 8 0 here and then I'm going to make sure I go into this little 11 0 right here, get you in closer, right there. What that will do, instead of having it stick out, it'll just kind of center it right over that 8 0. <clears throat> just like that. And then we will do the other side the exact same way. So pick, park your right needle out of the way and then pick up your piece, go down through just the 11 0 on the left side here and pull your thread through. <clears throat> pick up an 11 0, drop it down and then just go back into that 11 0 that you're coming out of on the opposite side so from the top down and then you can also go through the 8 0 and 11 0 below it if you can get through them. 
they can be at funny angles. So I'm just going to go through the 11 0 and 8 0, just like this, and pull this down. Lay it out. And then I am going to continue sewing down the beads on the left hand side here. So I'll pick up this 11 0 here, go down into the pearl and the 11 0 below it. And now it's a little tighter, so I'm just going to go through that 11 0. Then I'm going to go through the 8 0. Just like that. The pendant is up tight, so you have to go around it. So I'm going to go through the pendant. <clears throat> Pull my thread nice and neat. And then I'm going to go back up into all the beads on the left side. So I'll go up into this 8 0 here. And I'll just exit that 8 0 here. <clears throat> now we have to sew up all of these beads and then when we come through the 8 0 we're going to come through this 11 0 to pull it into place. So we are just going to go up through the 11 0, the pearl, and the 11 0 here. Go into the 8 0. And then just come up into that 11 0 right here. <laughs> come here. It's trying to get away from me. All right. I'm going to turn this just so I can actually access it. So there we go. So I am now coming out of the two love and nose we put on either side. I hope I stayed in camera. Let me get out of the way here. So basically you'll do the same thing on this side that you did on this side exactly. So if I was a little out of camera, it's the same exact thing. Now I'm going to just park my left hand needle aside, pick up my right hand needle, and I'm going to start working a little bit of herringbone. I'm going to do another set here. So you've got beads side by side. It's set up perfectly for a herringbone stitch. So we're going to pick up two 11 0 seed beads and we're going to go straight down into the bead next to the one we're coming out of. Going down through and pull it completely through like this. Then we're going to cross over let me get you even a little closer here. I'm going to cross over and go into both beads on this side. So you're coming out of the bead here, cross over, go into the two on this side and pull that tight. Then we will go ahead and do the other side too, the same way. We'll, do, we'll swap stitches back and forth just to make sure everything is equal on both sides because then I'm going to show you how to just do one side and then we can do the other side off camera. So I parked my right hand one to the side, picked up two 11 0. I'm coming out of this bead here. I'm going to go down into the 11 0 next to the bead I'm coming out of. Right here, and just the 11 0. I'm going to pull this down. And then I'm going to go, now that I have two of them, I'm going to go into the two 11 0s next to the one I just put. Um, came out of right here. So go up through two on this side and hold on to it and pull that down. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to start our spiral stitch. So we're going to start our first stitch here will be we're going to pick up a um, blue 11 0 seed bead and one of my gold. So whatever colors you're using, pick up both of them. I'm going to put my colored one out to the outside and then I am going to go down into both of these beads on the side next to where I'm coming out. So I'm just going to cross straight over and go down through both of those 11 O's and pull this down. And then I'm going to cross over and go back up through all three on this side. Okay. 
So now we are going to pick up a 11-0 in the blue color. Then we're going to pick up an 11-0 in the gold color. We're going to go down through just one 11-0 right here. And pull this down. Let them lay out on top of each other like this. Now on this side, instead of going straight across and coming back up through, we're going to go down three beads. So we're coming out two here. We're going to go down to the third bead on this side and then back up through all three beads, just like this. So your thread will be kind of at a diagonal going through your beads. And we're going to pull this. Now this will start it to twist. So what we're going to do now is pick up another 11-0. We're coming out of a blue one, so we'll pick up a blue one, and then we'll pick up one of the gold ones, and we'll go straight across. We're coming out here, we'll go straight across into the one next to the one we're coming out of and just go through one 11-0, just like this. Pull this down, straighten them out, and then we're going to cross over and go up through three beads on this side. So just go straight up these three beads and pull. So down one, up three, down one, up three. You want to stay consistent on the side that you're pulling your, or that you're crossing over and going up through. If you do not, your um, spiral will be kind of weird. So I'll tell you what, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So pick up one 11 L, a blue, one of gold, go down through one. So cross over into the gold one, go down, through it. <clears throat> now when you cross over, you want to make sure even as this twists that you still stay on this side. Don't cross over this way and go up through your three. Stay on this side. Cross straight over even as it twists and go up three beads. Now pick up an 11-0 in blue, 11-0 in gold, down one gold, lay it out, and go up three on this side. And as it starts to spiral, it can be confusing as to where your, your needle is going through. So always just go to your right. So after you pick it up, go to your right and go over. Um, you can turn it in your hand too. Just make sure that you don't suddenly start coming around the other side to go up through your beads because if you do, your spiral will not look right. So pick up an 11-0 and another 11-0. I'm coming out of my blue, I pick up my blue, go down my gold, lay them out and go up three 11 O's on this side. As I pull it tight, you can see it's starting to twist already. And I'll just stay consistent with that. Pick up the blue, <clears throat> pick up the gold, go down the gold. And this is what I'm talking about when you're coming back up through as it starts to twist. The tendency might be to skip over and go through this side, but you want to stay over on this side as you cross over and go up through. Come on, you guys. Stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Okay. I'll straighten it out as I come up. Come on. There we go. That one was stubborn. Okay, pull this up. And just continue. We'll do a couple more. And then we'll go to length off camera here. Okay, you see the issue here? I'm not coming out of my blue bead, so. <clears throat> when I traveled up, I missed one. 
So you will see your, your beads won't lay correctly if you miss one. This is really a simple stitch, but there are little things, of course. We're all human, we do little weird things. So just make sure you come up through all three of those beads, pick up your two beads, come down through this one, cross over, go up through three. Okay, now it's getting to the point to where it'll be easier to handle because I can hold on to the spiral a little. In the beginning, there's not much to hold on to and it just makes it a little bit tougher. Now you should be able to just fly through this. Just go down one, up three. Now see here, I could just cross over and go up. That'll screw up my spiral. So make sure you turn and go up the three the, on the side you've been originally going up through. Just make sure you stay consistent in the side that you go up through your beads. Come here. I'm sorry, with the pendant it's a little heavy. Up through these three. Oh my goodness. Okay, you guys, I'm graceful today. Sorry. You know? Just sorry, just so sorry. Okay, and you can also tell, you'll see where your thread crosses over. And so you can make sure that you're staying consistent with the side you go up through. Now this is not hard. I'm fumbling a little bit because my pendant's a little heavy and I'm trying to stay in camera and such, but this is very easy. Just continue doing the stitch and continue until you have the length that you want to make your necklace. So I'm going to go, I, I'm going to make probably about nine inches and that way I will have an 18 inch necklace. So I will continue making my spiral and then I will come back and show you what it looks like. We'll end that side and begin the other side and do the same thing. So just continue making your spiral and we'll be back in a few. Okay, so as you can see, I have finished the length that I would like on my spiral to achieve the length of necklace that I want. So I've gone about eight and a half inches because by the time I add my clasping, then I am going to have another half inch to an inch. So that will make me around 18, 19 inch necklace. <clears throat> So the way I'm measuring it is you will measure it from the middle of your crystal. You can put it on your beadboard too, but I'm just measuring from the middle of my crystal and then I stretch this out and I've got about eight and a half inches. So I know that eight and a half with eight and a half is going to make me about a 19 inch necklace. So um, because you're just measuring one half, of course, you're going to have the other half too. That will double your length and that will be the length of your necklace. So if you you want, if you're very small and you want around a 16, 17 inch necklace, then you're going to want to go about eight, eight and a half inches, um, or excuse me, seven, seven and a half inches. If you want a medium sized necklace, an 18, 19 inch, you're going to go eight, eight and a half. And if you want a 20 inch necklace, then you're going to go nine, nine and a half. And once you have established the length that you want with your spiral, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put on some clasping. So I'm coming out of my herringbone out of the blue side here. For my clasping, I'm going to go ahead and pick up two gold ones just because I'm going to use gold clasping and this will kind of give me an idea of where I'm at on my herringbone. So I'm going to pick up two. I'm coming out of the blue. I'm going to cross over and I'm just going to go into one on the gold side. Instead of now crossing over and going up three, I'm just going to cross over and go up two. So I have my two down here. I'm going to go up the two on this side. But these little spirals are kicking my butt. There we go, just like that. And this is what I have, get you in close. Now I'm going to pick up an 80 seed bead here. I'm going to drop it down and then I'm going to pick up my clasp and I'm going to go through the loop on my clasp. And then I'm going to go 
through the 8 seed bead and through the 11 on the other side. So I'm coming out of this side, I'm going into this side. I'm going to pull this down. Just like that. And to center it. Now I have to cross over into the gold seed bead next to the one that I just next to the one that I'm coming out of. So go straight over, go into that gold one on this side, up through the 8 up through the clasp, just like this, and pull. Then come back down around, so you're in your clasping, go down into the 8 and then this time, when you come down, go through two of your beads on your herringbone. So you're going to go through the ones we just added, the 11 here and the 11 beneath it, just to give it a little bit more strength. Then we're going to cross straight over and go up into this blue one next to the gold one we added. So go up into two on this side also, right here. Then go up into this 8 seed bead and into your clasping. Go back down around, go down into three this time, all the way down three, just to anchor this nicely. So I'm going down three seed beads on this side. If you so between if if you keep going in and out of these two, you're not going to have as much security, plus you're gonna have a big blob of thread right there. So that's why I'm alternating each time I come down, I come down a different set of beads to cross over and go back up through. So on this side I have one, two, three. I'm going to cross over one, two, three, go into this one right here. Straight across from where I'm coming out and go up all, whoops, see I missed it. Okay, so I need to go up three beads. <laughs> Gina, yeah, right? <laughs> the blue ones are hard to see guys. I am sorry, it feels like I'm not in the right place, but I am. There we go. I'm tired this morning, I couldn't sleep last night, so I'm sorry guys if I'm kind of weird. All right, so now I'm coming out of this 11 right here. I'm going to go down into the, between the two stitches here. So let's get you really close so you can see. I've just stabbed it in between right underneath that 8 and I'm gonna pull it through. And I am going to make a loop with my thread, go through my loop like this, and then I'm going to pull a knot down so it sinks down between this 8 and this 11 here. And then I'm going to sew through a few more. And then I'm just going to cut my thread off. You can knot as many times as you want, however you feel like you can knot it to secure it. As we've intertwined this, this is going to stay fine. I've gone through it enough times. I've gone up through all the beads. It's going to stay fine. And putting in all kinds of extra layers is just going to mess up my spiral. So I'm just going to cut this off, just like that. And now I have really pretty clasping, as you can see. Turned out really pretty. Now. I have one side of my necklace complete. We're going to do the other side exactly the same way. So I'll get you started on this side and then you're just going to take off and do your spiral until you have the same amount. You'll measure it and you can put it right next to each other. Make sure you have exactly the same length on either side and then you can put your clasping on and um, be done. So. Now I have got my left side. I'm just going to turn it over. Well, maybe not. Maybe I won't turn it over. Maybe I'll just turn it. Mm, yeah, I'll just hold it like this. So I started with my blue on the outside. I'm coming out of this outside set of 11 O's. So I'm counting outside as the farthest away from my crystal here. So I'm going to pick up a blue and then I'm going to pick up a gold. And then I'm going to go down into both the 11 O's on this side. So I'm crossing over, going through both of these 11 O's, and I'm going to pull this down. Then I'm going to cross over and go back up through 
the beads on this side. So all three beads on this side here. Pull this down. Then I'm going to pick up an 11 0 and 11 0 in blue because I'm coming out of blue and then a gold. I'm going to go down through one more time I'm going to go down through all of these beads. Um, let's see, did I start my spiral right away? So, Okay, so I'm going down through all because they lo looked kind of funny, so I'm just going to go through all of them, cross over, go up through here. Now I'm going to pick up a blue and then I'm going to pick up a gold. I'm going to go down through just one gold on this side and up through three of the blue beads on the opposite side. So up through all three. Sorry guys, to start it, it's just kind of clumsy and I'm trying to stay in camera and you know, I'm feeling not very graceful today. Now you can see, I'm starting my spiral already from doing that. So now we're going to pick up a blue because we're coming out of blue and a gold. Go into one gold one and up three blue ones. So cross over, straighten these out, cross over, and I'll go up three right here. And once I don't have to stay in camera, this will be a lot less clumsy and I can just cruise right through this. It is not hard. I'm just simply trying to keep control of the piece so that it's not crazy for you guys. And you can see my spiral is already starting. So begin to do your spiral again on this side. Down one bead, up three. That's all you have to remember. Pick up the, be the color of the bead you're coming out of and just continue. And make this side exactly the same length as this side and we will be back. Okay, so this is what it looks like after I finish this entire side and put on my clasping just like we did on the other side. Exact same process and this is what you end up with and I think it turns out just really pretty. So let me get you in close so you can see the focal area here. Come on camera, there we go. And this is what this looks like. It's so pretty. So I've decided that this needs a set of earrings. So I have designed a little earring. And I'm going to show you what we're going to need to make it. You're going to have to double that because I've already made one. So this is what this looks like. It's just the spiral again with um, a big crystal at the end. In your treasure bag, you have five of these blue crystals. In my website or on my website in my store I do have variety packs of these I cannot guarantee what colors you're going to get because they're in a variety pack and they're just random um, so if you want some of these you can get some so we're going to use another crystal and of course double this like I said and then an ear wire a wire guardian an 8 o seed bead and then we're going to use some of our 11 o's back off here 11 o's that we were using in our original design here in our necklace so I'm using the cobalt cobalt and the starlight in the Toho line so what we're going to do to make this move some of this stuff out of my way I'm going to pick up my needle and I have put onto my needle about two and a half to three feet of thread that should be more than plenty then you're going to pick up your crystal and go through your crystal you're going to bring it to the end of the thread and leave enough thread so that you can hang on to that tail and keep it secure while we do our first step or two and then I'm going to pick up two 11 o seed beads onto my needle and I'm going to go back through this crystal I'm going to get you a little bit closer and I'm going to go back through the crystal holding on to the tail holding on to the bead and just pull these two 11 O's down and then arrange them so that they sit side by side 
on top of the crystal, like this. Then, still holding onto your tail because nothing's secure yet, you're going to pick up an 11 -0 seed bead and you're going to go back up through the crystal and then up through one of the beads on the two that you put on top here. Pull everything through, pull on your tail, pull on your working thread, and get everything nice and tight so it looks like this. We're going to get in even just a tiny bit closer so you can see exactly what's going on. Now we're coming out here, I'm still holding onto my tail, I'm going to go back down into the 11 O's on top here, I'm going to go into the one next to the one I'm coming out of, and then I'm going to come down through the crystal. And then I'm going to go through the 11 0 on the bottom. And then back up through the crystal. And I'm just coming straight out of that crystal. And then I'm going to go up underneath one of these 11 0s right here. So that I am coming out of the 11 0. Now you don't have to hold on to your tail so tight. It's somewhat secure. We'll secure it one more time before we cut it off to make sure that everything is nice and tight. I like to straighten out the 11 -0 on the bottom so that the hole is sideways so you can slide in and out of it as we do this. Now I'm going to pick up two more of my golden color 11 O's and I'm going to go into the bead next to the one I'm coming out of. Pull these down, lay them on top of the two previous, and then I'm going to go back down into the crystal. Then I'm going to go through my 11 0 on the bottom here and back up into the crystal. And then I will come back into both of these 11 O's on this side. Make sure I'm coming through both of them, just like that. Okay, so on the, now, <laughs> never mind, I don't know what I'm talking about. N next, we're going to pick up a blue 11 O, and then we're going to pick up a, um, gold 11 -0. and we're going to go down through just one 11 -0 here or actually go ahead and go through both of them we're not going to start our spiral just yet so just go through both of them pull this down and then cross straight over and go up through all three beads on this side so I got my two 11 O's I'll come back or gold 11 O's I'll come back through this one here there so I've just traveled down all three on this side and up all three on this side. Now I can start my little spiral. So I'm coming out of the blue bead, so I'm going to pick up a blue bead, and then I'm going to pick up a gold bead, and I'm just going to go down one gold bead because I'm coming out of the blue, so I'm going to cross over, go down the gold, and pull these down. Now. I need to go through three beads on this side. So the pattern is down one, up three. So I'm going to cross over and go up this gold bead and then both of these blue beads right here, just like this, and pull. And that's already going to start it turning a little bit, just like that. Then I am going to pick up a blue bead and a gold bead and I'm coming out of the blue, so I pick up blue, I go into the gold, down one bead. Lay these two out, and then I'm going to go up three blue beads. So down one, up three. Now I'm going to pick up a blue bead and a gold bead, go down into the gold bead, Straighten this out, and then up three beads on this side. And I think I did, let me see how many sets I did on this one. One, two, two. 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to do this and so that I can count seven blue beads once I've done, once I have finished. You can do as many or as little as you would like of this spiral. Make them as long and dramatic as you'd like or short, it doesn't matter. I just want to make sure I get one spiral around. So I have gone back down into that gold bead and then I am going to straighten these out and go up through three beads. It's my grandson's birthday and my son is sending me a bunch of pictures so and videos of the baby destroying his cake. So that's what's coming through. If you hear that, I have to go indulge in that in a minute. So that's what that looks like. And then we're going to go ahead and pick up an 11 o and a blue 11 o and a gold 11 o And we're going to go into the gold. Straighten these out. Turn over this way and go up three. So I'm going to do one more unit. Then I'll have my seven blue beads on here. I go up these three here and everything is going to argue with me today. It just does not matter what I do. Even dishes, when I was doing the dishes they were arguing with me. I guess it's just one of those days. So one more, my last set. Blue, gold, down one gold. Up three, blue. Just like this. Now, I am going to grab an 8 o seed bead and I'm going to drop it down to my piece. Make sure I actually counted this correctly. Yeah, that looks about right. So we're going to bring this down and then we're going to pick up one of our wire guardians and I'm going to squeeze my wire guardian woo, and fling it across the room. I'm going to squeeze the bottom together so that um, it will fit on top of my 8 -o. So I'm just gently squeezing it so that there's not a big wide opening between the two tube sides. And then I am going to go up through one side of this wire guardian, just like this. Bring it down. I'm going to bring it down to this 8 -o and arrange it. And then I am going to go into the other side of the wire guardian. Let's see, what did I do? Yeah, that's right, okay. Into the other side of the wire guardian. I just designed this, you'd think I would remember, huh? But no. Come on. I have to go into the tube on the other side, and then I'm going to go into the 8 here, and I'm just gonna pull this down. And I'm holding onto that wire guardian so I can feel my thread slide down into the divot on top. Now I am coming, I started on this side, so I'm going to go into this gold bead right here and pull this all over centered. There. Now I have centered that on top. Now I am going to cross over and go into the blue bead next to the gold bead I'm coming out of. And then I'm going to go up into the 8 o seed bead, just like this. Hold on to this, pull it through, and then I'm going to go up into the wire guardian. Now, you could have done that all in one movement too, so you can do that, go up through the 8 o and into one of the tubes on the wire guardian also. Then I'm going to go into the other side and down into the 8 o like this. I'm going to hold on to it so I can guide my thread into that divot on the wire guardian and then I'm going to sew down two of my beads here. On the gold side I'm going to go down two. And pull this down. Now in order not to mess up my spiral I can't go straight across into this blue bead or into the bead right here. It'll kind of mess up my spiral. So I'm here 
the bead right next to it is here, I'm going to go into the bead underneath it, that one, so that I'm at an angle like I had been as I was making my spiral. So I'm, I've come down two, I'm going up three. And then I'm going to go into that 8 and through my wire guardian one more time, and we will tie this off. And then up the wire guardian here, and then I'm going to go down into the wire guardian and the 8 and pull this down. And then I'm going to straighten out my little spiral. And now I'm going to go between the two columns here of the 11 O's. I'm just going to put my needle right through the middle. And I'm going to make myself a nice little loop. And as I do this, I want to make sure as I pull this around that my thread goes up between the 8 and that blue bead, that blue 11 O just like that, so that it doesn't pull across my herringbone. And now I have a knot. Now I'm not gonna go crazy with knotting this because I'll just mess it up. So I'm gonna slide down several of these beads on the blue side here. See, and exit one of them somewhere here, just like this. And I'm going to cut off my thread. And you can cut it off enough, leave it tagged so, so that you can uh, melt it down if you'd like, or you can just cut it really close, just like that. Now I'm going to cut off this tail. Come on, my scissors are so dull. And I've left a tiny bit of a tag here of thread, and I'm just going to melt that in just like that. And then arrange my little piece all pretty and perfect. And then I'm going to grab my ear wire and I'm going to open it and slide on the wire guardian and close it. And voila, I have a very fast, unique, pretty little earring. So yeah, turn them over so they're both the same. You can have it like that, or you can have them like that. It don't matter, but um, there we go. And put your ear wire on so that your spiral is the same on either side. I didn't even think about that. So I've got that one that way, and that's fine. Just like that. And you can twist them a little bit more. They're kind of pliable. You can twist them a little bit before you put them on. And that's what that looks like. I guess I should be in camera instead of just playing with my earrings and just doing my own thing and just having a jolly old time. All right, so let me put this together. Voila, such a cute little set. I really like it. Okay, so let me get this all in camera and show you what the little thing looks like. Oh, it's all. There we go. I think that turned out really cute. I just love it. And I hope you like it too. And if you do, please consider Maybe hitting that like button and perhaps this subscribe. I can't talk. This is, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I'm not even going to go into it. And perhaps the notification bell so that we can continue making stuff together. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Have a good day. Bye-bye.